In this video, we're going to look at how one man's passion to find answers about the forest turned into a unique sense of fusion collaboration product by Phoenix LiDAR. We'll also discover the benefits of combining LiDAR with hyperspectral and other sensors to help us better understand our planet. Well, hey, welcome, Evan. Um, for our viewers, would you like to tell us your, your background and experience and, and what you're actually starting to do with our LiDAR systems? Great. My name is Evan Brabant. I'm an associate professor at the University of Florida, and I co-direct the Spatial Ecology and Conservation Lab um, at the University of Florida. I've been working with remote sensing since about 2000, uh, maybe even 99, when I first started using aerial uh, high resolution aerial imagery to map areas of biodiversity in upstate New York. Uh, back then, it was the very beginning, you know, like coding work and, and arc info kind of stuff. And so that was exciting. Um, going on from there, I started working in Bolivia uh, with forestry. And so my background actually at that point was all tropical botany. And I was very interested at that point in getting into forestry uh, here at the University of Florida. So I came down and started my master's. Uh, at the University of Florida, where I ended up 23 years later, once again, so fortuitously for me. Um, and so I was working down in the Bolivian logging concessions and became very interested in how remote sensing could be used. So as I started work, started working with the Carnegie Airborne Observatory based at Stanford University with Greg Asner and his team, then I started to really get experience with LiDAR data, and that was just incredible stuff. So back back then, that was the very start of sensor fusion in which you have multiple different sensors, all very high quality, tons of data being collected, all at the same time, in the same place, meaning the same aircraft. And then really starting to learn about the new miniaturization of these aircraft sensors that I was so passionate about and working with, and the fact that they were becoming miniaturized and able to be mounted onto drones. So this is right around the same time that the team at Phoenix um, first did some of the very first integrations of these new miniaturized LiDAR sensors into drone systems. Um, and I wanted to build, I wanted to build this system that I was so excited for from the aircraft, you know, but on a drone system. So I could go around, have it on a more reasonable budget and in particular logistically, just be able to go anywhere I wanted and get these amazing data sets and ask any kinds of question I wanted to. And that's really what I was excited about doing. And, you know, would be a feature in my career trajectory is, was my intention. However, it didn't exist and it didn't exist anywhere, anything like that. I wanted to take this aircraft stuff and do it all in drones. And so, you know, I got in touch with uh, Phoenix and uh, got them excited about the ideas. And, um, you know, that was quite a long time ago, a couple of years after they really started the company and they were just so enthusiastic about my ideas and my own enthusiasm and the potential for it. So ever since then, you know, we've just been ongoing in terms of taking new exciting sensors, um, not only getting them mounted onto drones and able to be controlled via scout systems and other types of Phoenix uh, proprietary types of systems integrated in, but also simultaneously um, as, my, um, as my understanding of how these sensors worked on drones increased, then we would add additional sensors so that I could improve my own um, internal algorithms at the spec lab. And so now, you know, we're flying sometimes five different sensors at a time on a variety of drone platforms, being able to do types of data collections that I'm not aware of anyone else in the world doing, um, you know, five sensors, dual hyperspectral sensors, uh, accommodating for changes in cloud cover and solar positioning in real time, you know, down to the centimeter at that location. And a lot of these things were based on a, a different ex painful experiences in the field could, yep. Evan, could you share uh, the, the the system that you currently have so they could see what we're actually putting together? We operate a number of different systems. Uh -huh. um, however, one of the ones that we're using in a, a very lot right now um, is a Harris Aerial H6 platform that we've worked very closely with Harris as well to heavily modify for our specifications. And then coupled with the, um, the Phoenix sensor suites, put integrated them for unique capabilities and given them Gator Eye names. So we've got the Gator Eye XL. This is this Harris H6 system. 
designed for very large area data collects over long time periods with mm -hmm. lots of different sensors collecting huge volumes of data. Currently with this platform, we're engaged in the largest area drone LIDAR data collection that I've ever heard of, uh, encompassing thousands of square kilometers of data, very dense, tight and low, so we can get full 3D uh, vir virtualizations of forest structure trunks and branches. Uh, the Gator Eye XTR system more recently developed is specifically uh, developed for a project that we have in the Peruvian Amazon with the San Diego Zoo and our collaborators in Peru. And this system is flying a separate drone flight platform. We're, we will be using a Perimeter 8 Plus um, that's been weatherproofed and also customized. And that's flying this specific flight platform uh, sensor package right here. We have a very high resolution uh, 32 laser sensor here. And on the back, we've got a 64 megapixel, very high resolution visual camera. And so cup, this coupled with the Perimeter 8, we call it the um, XTR system. That one's, that one's, you know, every system has different capabilities uniquely for their circumstances. In Peru, we need to get everything into small passenger jets. Um, you know, once you get from Lima flying over the Andes into uh, Madre de Dios, then you're talking about pretty small jets. From there, we get onto small uh, motorized canoes and go upriver through areas of uh, intense illegal uh, mining and other operations for hours until we get out to um, the study area. So a lot of the logistics there are, can we just package things small into t tight Pelican cases and get them into these airplanes? So with the XTR system, we can do that. And we'll get out there and we're collecting large areas of very dense data designed to go through and penetrate the, the rainforest canopy, which is something this particular sensor is good for M2X system. You can see it on the Phoenix website. Um, and so this is, if you fly low and flight lines tight together, you can penetrate through the rainforest uh, even even if we're talking, you know, 60 meter or plus tall trees and get all the way down through the structure into the forest floor, enabling us to run some of our algorithms to get very uh, accurate three dimensional voxels or volumetric pixels of vegetation. With this, then we understand the virtual forest and we know where the jaguars and the monkeys and the tapirs and the peccaries are moving through the forest. And it's all about jungle movement ecology. Um, all our collaborators on this project are very much into animal movement and are experts on this. And so for this project, we've got a variety of species with GPS collars, camera traps, uh, people doing botanical transects. And so with all the LIDAR data, we can understand the structure of the forest. How does that impact animal movement? With the high resolution camera, we can start to think about what is the species distribution in the forest canopy, looking at keystone um, crown species and thinking about uh, sources of food so, and including uh, seeds, fruit and flowering. And how does that impact animal movement? Well, hey, so first off, um, if somebody wants to see more of this or, or see your research in that, why don't we leave a link for them uh, so they can actually look at this data because the stuff that you're doing is so revolutionary. Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly ask you, I mean, this is this is Phoenix LiDAR's 10 year anniversary. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Because you've had such a long history with these folks. Is there anything you want to say with these guys um, on their tenure? Yeah, it's been, um, you know, really, I'm so grateful to have found them uh, when I did and that they had come up with these great ideas and capabilities, you know, before. It existed and um, it's been a real honor to be a part with them from the early days on developing and pushing these new cutting edge systems and using them and the, the support has been phenomenal. Uh, I love working with them and all, from even generating and taking from ideas to products uh, has been incredible, but also the subsequent support of these products, you know, things uh, you have issues and they're just they're there for you, you know, you call them on the phone or emails. Um, so all along, they're really just making research program possible. So, and uh, I, I appreciate their help um, going above and beyond. So happy 10th and thank you all. Look forward to working with you for the next 10. So, Yeah, Evan, thank you so much for coming on today. I mean, the stuff that you are doing is, uh, is cutting edge. I don't know anybody else that's doing quite um, anything like it to be honest with you. I mean, I know there's people looking at trying to find and solve the problems you're dealing with um, or you're actually solving. Um, if somebody wanted to work with you, 
um, or, or learn more about what you're doing, how would they go about doing that? So I put a little screen share up here. You can go to our website, speclab.org. Uh, from there, you can link into different things we're working on of all types, but including the Gatorade project, learn more about that. Um, and then you can shoot me an email and I'm always open to chat about things. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much for sharing today. I really appreciate your time. You're extremely welcome. Thank you for contacting me and it's a pleasure to say thank you to Phoenix for all their hard work.